6 o'clock. I'm going to call the uh, public hearing uh, to order at this time. Uh, this is the Harrison Planning Commission conducting a public hearing for the purposes of reviewing the zoning code of the land development a document, the Master Street Plan. Uh, this segment of it is for the revisions that have taken place within those documents. The previous zoning ordinance and ordinances that have been adopted by the City of Harrison were adopted uh, a little over 10 years ago, 10 years and two months to be exact. Uh, so this is an update of those documents. Uh, the Planning Commission worked on that from under the provisions of the Municipal stand, uh, Planning Statute Act 186 in 1957, the function and really the municipal uh, planning, the responsibility of the planning commission is to propose, develop, and go through new documents. It's the powers and duties of the commission to go through these documents. And so we have done that, we're proposing that. As a part of the statute uh, is that we, uh, the planning commission shall hold a public hearing on the plan or plans or ordinances and regulations proposed under this act. And that's what we're doing here tonight. Uh, with the Planning Commission members we have here, uh, we have Joe Williams, I, I'm Mike Morton, we have Joe Williams, Pat Brown, Herb Blair, and uh, Bob, Bob Dodson. We have two members that are out of town and they attend. Now this segment of the public hearing is not to discuss the uh, bypass. Uh, that's the, the mayor and the director of public <coughs> works, I believe, are going to stay and address that following the public hearing. So if you have comments, uh, the publication for these documents, the notice was put in the paper, I think January 30th, uh, and they've been on public review and available for review since that time for anyone to look at, read through, and make any notations. So we're here as a planning commission tonight to get feedback or hear from you if you have anything uh, that you think we should be aware of in this proposed document. I would ask if you have comments, please step up to the podium, give your name, uh, and we'll receive your comments at that time. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on either the zoning code the proposed land development code or the master street plan over here. This might be one of the best public hearings I've ever seen. <laughs> Everyone's here for the bypass, right? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna gladly give this one more shot. Is there any uh, when he wished to speak. <coughs> My name is Barbara Lazarus, and I was just uh, thinking about if we could have a middle lane, a turning lane on Gibson. Sometimes coming out of the driveways, there's cars flying over the hill, and I have to go back up. And I just think it would be safer with more traffic that's going to be on that road if they could have a middle turn lane. That's all I have to say. Anyone else wish to address the planning commission? Has anyone read the zoning code and the uh, or looked over it? We we do have it on the website, don't we? Yes, it's been available. Okay. So you can do it on search there if you want to go to the website and want to look at uh, anything that's in there. It's a lot of things just updated on definitions and some of the things that's kind of come about just because of change in time and over the last ten years, but. Uh, that's something you, you know, since you're here, uh, I'll let you make a note of that, go back and look at it, and, and you know, obviously we like input on that too, so if you get an opportunity, uh, at least, you know, go over and see some of the things that pertain to you or pertain to your interest, and let us know if you got anything there that you want to comment on. Yes, adoption. Pardon? Steps for adoption. Yeah. Uh, part of this tonight is to just strictly go through uh, our steps. You know, uh, the proposal we've gone through, uh, and I want to uh, 
paid some uh, homage to Pat Brown, who headed up and chaired the committee who went through uh, went <coughs> the zoning regulations and the minimum standards along with the city public works director, and did a lot of work to update all of this. Uh, but this is just a step that we go through. There's the public hearing, which is where we are now. Uh, following the public hearing, uh, the proposed plans may be adopted, the proposed ordinance the regulations may be recommended and presented in modification if needed uh, to the entire planning commission, which it will be done at our next meeting. From there, it goes the follow-up adoption of the plan. The plans are recommended to the ordinance. Regulations planning commission so certify adoption of the plan or plans for recommendations. It eventually, at that point, once it's finalized, we will present it to this legislative body, which is the Harrison City Council. The council will have the options to adopt it in its current uh, form if there's no objection or they don't see anything wrong, which that's the reason we're having public hearing to find out if there is such a thing. Uh, or they can send it back to the planning commission for further study or they can deny it. Uh, but we feel very good that this will serve our city better uh, in the future for growth, uh, both for uh, developers and the city itself. Uh, as far as the master street planning goes, what we're trying to do is get ahead of uh, the game a little bit so we can plan for future development. As you know, uh, congestion in our city has uh, increased uh, significantly over the years, and we're trying to figure out ways to uh, provide other arterial uh, lanes of ingress and egress to our principal arterials with the federal and state highways and minimize more congestion, and that we don't develop over them uh, if you, uh, so they don't get uh, ruined before we ever get there, so. Uh, no questions? No comments? Good question. Uh, I figured you might. Yeah. I knew you could. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just was made aware of this. I should have been paying attention, but is the in your master plan is Old Farm Road in that plan or is that really concerning the bypass? The Old Farm Road is that, that on that you may change the bypass? Yes, it, it's identified in the uh, master street plan in the map. Now that's a you know uh, it's not in concrete, but okay. it is identifying by we try to identify the streets by classification, which is by volume basically. And the more volume they have, the more tension they get, whether they need to be widened or, or if there's drainage problems or anything else. But north-south corridors in our city, to me, are, are very important. Right. I do have an issue with it being Old Farm Road widened to increase the traffic. Uh, it's a neighborhood uh, with children, uh, and I don't really feel that that would be a safe option to widen and increase the traffic. Uh, it would seem to me it'd be better to try to move that traffic to the highway that's just a little bit further down. Right. So I think it's pretty nice that it's identified also if that's a state highway. Yeah. So, so. I, I do have an issue with that. I'm not sure who I'm going to talk to about that. You just have to tell me who. Well, we can see if we ever get to that point. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> My name is Bob Kramer, and I don't know if this is an appropriate uh, place for this or not, but I am concerned about uh, signage, the, the uh, uh, billboards and that kind of thing, and I don't know if that should be considered with... Uh, that would be under the Beautification Act, and I think there has been a proposal, but it's not under the zoning codes. But I think that the... the that's a, separate be limited, that's a separate ordinance in our and area. so I don't, I don't know if it comes under this or not. Let's see, um, you guys left the current signage provisions pretty well intact for the existing code, because those were adopted in 2011 or 2012? The sign Yeah, that's right. I don't, I don't I believe there are any significant changes to that particular provision. 
And is it the number of signs, size of the signs, or the digital signs where they've got action and activity that you're talking about, or just all of the above? I'm sorry? Yeah, just just what, the number of signs, or the size yes, of signs, I mean, it or seems the, you know, like you get a lot more digital they're signs. They're going up so. everywhere, it's becoming more and more of an eyesore rather than mm -hmm. uh, public information or whatever. I, I know several of the cities, Springfield and uh, several others have enacted ordinances uh, limiting the number of billboards per mile or uh, whatever it is. And I, I think it's time that we do uh, something like that because I think they're getting out of hand. The city council would have to draft a separate ordinance when we figure us out. Any other comments? Input? Going once? Twice? Call the uh, public hearing adjourned at this time. We want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, we hope you get an opportunity to read. If you do find something, uh, we'll still be available to um, let us know. You can either contact us planning commission or posted on the web or yeah. city public works director are always pretty good targets. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the mayor and the public works director are going to stay and address any uh, questions directed at the bypass, uh, which I think most of you are here to have an interest of. So good luck, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll stand up. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Well, we'll give you a little history first before we get started on anything tonight. About three years ago, Wade and I, our public works director, approached the state on uh, widening our 65, our current 65 corridor. We looked at it, and if we could just get our corridor safe and all the egress is fixed, our light system, our traffic flow, and everything else. We approached the state on doing that first. We never mentioned the bypass. We never mentioned it, even though it was already on the board. They brought us, what, about six months ago or so, a couple of renderings on 65, or our current 65. Of course, those renderings, some of them were astronomical and like flyovers and things of town and we knew that would not happen. You know, they weren't going to spend the hundreds of millions of dollars on Harrison, Arkansas for flyovers. Even though it would have brought the tourists here. But uh, actually we told them to take it back to the drawing board. And about a month ago this right here was the first rendering. And guess what? I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let Mr. Phil, you want, you want to talk about what they said? Yes. Or do you, or you want me to? No, I'm done. Okay. I'll let him start out on what they proposed to us. Okay. Uh, just to step back on the history a little bit, it was about six or seven years ago when uh, the Arkansas Highway Commission adopted a bypass study, which basically adopted the, the potential for these possible routes that they have shown us that's been in the newspaper that people have talked about. Our concerns were traffic levels on the current 65 even if a bypass was completed. Maybe the safety and how traffic flows there. Even their study stated that if a bypass is done, it's not going to solve the problems on Highway 65. So the letter that we, the communications that we had with uh, Highway Department, which I guess is RDOT now, a few years ago was directed towards we understand this is in your plan in the future but we need you to pay attention to what we've got right now because even your study says it's not going to fix our problems. So we didn't necessarily want 50, 60 million dollars invested by passing the down, <coughs> by passing the town while we were still left with deficiencies coming through town. So we had a few meetings over the course yeah. of several months the final, I guess, 
option that they presented to us for Highway 65 through town. And this would be what they would have to do in lieu of a bypass around town would be six lanes with a median dividing the direction of direction of traffic. Um, Two really bad things come from that. Number one, widening that out to six lanes with a 16-foot median would take a lot of property. It would take businesses and buildings along our main commercial through our main commercial area, um, which would leave a lot of problems. And two, when you have that median in the middle, even those businesses that are left, the only way people can get to them is to make a right turn in because there will be no left turns allowed except at signalized intersections. So, simply put, we're not crazy about this option. Um, but, we wanted to at least put this information out to the public, get some feedback, because the highway department, while we are not going to have final say in what route they do or what direction they go, they have asked for our input. And I think it will matter, they will take it into consideration. So that's, kind of, that's why we've pushed this out to the public, to try and get you know, as much feedback as we can. Just this phase, <coughs> it's to give you an idea, it runs from Taco Bell, that intersection there by Taco Bell, to Aldi's, is a 30 plus million dollar project. They would have to do at least two other phases of probably equal cost. Um, to get out past Walmart. So you're looking at 90 plus million dollars to go six lanes from Industrial Park Road to past Walmart, which is, if anybody's driven up there on a Friday afternoon, that's our, one of our biggest problem areas. Um, that still doesn't address the safety concerns that we brought up with them on what was the original bypass around town, where it's too narrow, the lanes are narrow, you know, trucks, big trucks have trouble with their wheels dropping off in drainage boxes. Uh, the intersection down by Edwards is a nightmare uh, for a lot of people, even those of us used to it. <coughs> so this causes a lot of problems and still doesn't address a lot of the safety issues that we've got around town. Now, as far as the bypass goes, <coughs> they've got two basic options. One would go along the east side and around to the north. Um, would tie back in around Airport Road, somewhere in that area. Uh, and it would, on the south side of town, cool. just to give you an idea, somewhere in the neighborhood of Coy. Um, the other option would be to go along the south side, kind of leaving in that same general area. And then up the west side of town, either utilizing the airport road corridor or actually moving to the west of the actual airport itself and then tying back into 65 uh, north of town. None of the options that they have presented or that to us that we are aware of that they're consider currently considering go from Belfont to Bear Creek. Uh, I think those maps have existed as much as 20 years ago, but those are not the current options that are on the table. If you get a chance to look at these maps, one thing I do want everybody to be aware of, just because you have property in this corridor does not mean the bypass is going across your property. That's about 2,000 feet wide is what they've got drawn. This is where, these are the areas that they're going to be doing, environmental, other types of studies, in order to determine what the most feasible route is. And in all likelihood, they will take the, lap, the path of least resistance, which would be least cost, least property takings, least environmental issues. Uh, least cost. Least, yeah, I mean, finances will drive a lot of the decision. But first off, first off, you got to realize either one of these, I don't know about my lifetime, but anyway, they said... The section one of 65 current there, to rework that to six lanes, would it be at least 10 years, probably down the road. At least 10 years. Okay, you have to remember, that's just section one of how many sections we don't even know. 
this proposal, and I may say it's a rendering, they said it would probably be at least 12 years. So, give or take a few years. I'm not going to take anything. You're probably going to give more years. It's probably going to be like 15 to 20. But we can't put a time frame on anything, believe it or not. But uh, we put this out in the last three or four weeks. And believe it or not, I'm glad y'all are here. This We need input. Uh, I know people don't want to go through their property. They don't want to go through their back door. But we will not have a say in... If they do the bypass, it's going to be the highway department doing it. The city will not be doing it. What, what they expect from us is which direction the city wants to go. That's what they expect from us. They will hold, if they have to get everything done, they will hold their own public hearings. Where they are at right now, they've got the money program to conduct their environmental studies. Uh, that's all that is in their current seven-year uh, uh, transportation improvement plan that they've got on the books right now. There's no money allocated to actually begin acquiring right-of-way or actual construction. Um, that's, I would say that would probably be anywhere from five to 15 years out before they get to that part. And a lot of that will be driven by funding levels within the state and within the federal government. Um, you know, if they don't have enough money and they have more pressing needs, they'll, they'll send that money elsewhere. If this becomes a high priority, it will, part of that will be dictated by how traffic continues to grow on 65. Um, it could move, it could accelerate the schedule. It's, it's really hard to tell until the highway department gets to the point they've got the route picked and then they start conducting uh, right of way surveys, acquisitions, and public hearings. We kind of give an overview and now we kind of open it up yeah. to the Y'all, if it would please, I'm going to kind of use the same thing that Mr. Norton did. If you'll come step forward and like to ask a question, of us uh, state your name, come on up here at the podium. We'll try, uh, we don't know all the answers, I'll tell you that right now, so Danny, you might as well sit down. No, I <laughs> I'm Danny Hall. I just was curious if, it, if the bypass happened, would it include? 412, 62, and 65, or just 65? It will be a, it, it will be the 412, 62, 65. So there'll be some federal and state money both. And then, well, I don't we, know. we just, we don't know um, how they'll fund it. I just know it'll be all three combined. Yeah. Come on, folks. Yeah. Come on, folks. Yeah. Come on, folks. Come on, folks. We need some guidance here. Because uh, I'm going to tell you, a lot of things... This intersection right here of Rock Springs Road 43 and 65 is a nightmare. If we push them to go with the, say the bypass, either or however they go, we want that section reworked now. And it's already on the book. As I said, look. We already have a partnership agreement in place with the highway department to do a significant improvement project at that intersection, but it is somewhat on hold until final decisions are made as far as whether they're going to go with a six lane through town or a bypass. Um, that's, they can't really move forward with that project until they know what the actual cross section of 65 is going to look like in the end. So that's kind of what we're talking <coughs> about now. We want that intersection reworked as soon as we can get it. They, they, haven't they been out there surveying that yes. intersection last Two or three days? Yeah, they have the money program to do some improvements uh, through that corridor there. Uh, they're just not going to get too far along with it until uh, they know that they're not going to be putting a six length in there someday. So, you know, I, my personal <coughs> thoughts on the whole thing is, and I'll relay them a little bit, actually, you know, when you do a bypass, what do you worry about? Lost business. <coughs> you know, you're going to, is the city going to lose revenue and people are going to go out of business and everything else? That is a downfall, believe it or not. But their first 
thing was from Bear Creek, I mean, from Bear Creek up here to 412 and bypassing the city many, many miles. Well, that would kill Harrison. Mm -hmm. That would kill them. Whichever way they go here, I think in 30 years will be a plus to Harrison. Maybe 20 years. It would be a big plus to Harrison. Plus, we know how we can plan. The city can plan our infrastructure and our road work and everything else. How they base the decision on where they go with it. Yeah, and just sort of <coughs> expand a little bit on what you said there. Um, in order to prevent a new loop around town from becoming the same problem that we have now with just businesses popped up all over it and driveways, this will be a semi-controlled access highway, uh, whichever route they go uh, around town. So the potential for development will be on will be at uh, interchanges and uh, you know, the city's ability to develop barrier roads along that in order to allow for development. And that's what's going to have to that's what's going to have to happen if if they do that bypass and we want to have an opportunity for growth. It's it's going to change things. There's no doubt. But we're we're still going to stay after them to improve our our safety bike. We're still going to we're not going to drop that part of it. And I know they won't be able to spend millions and millions of dollars on it, but I think we can make it safer. Estimates 24,000. At this intersection, is about 24,000 cars a day. Anybody believe that? I yeah. might think it's more. But uh, we don't know, you know, a lot of, there's guesswork in this. How many cars will we lose a day? <laughs> It's guesswork. You know, some people say, well, you lose 5,000. Some people say, oh, you're going to lose 10,000. Unless you stop every car comes through and say, are you going through? You're, just, <laughs> you're working. It, you know, it's hard to say. But uh, that's it, more or less, in a nutshell. I know some of you are worried. You know, where I'm getting more feedback from is not from businesses. It surprised me. I didn't, haven't gotten any feedback. I don't know if anybody else has or not from businesses. But it's like the highway department said, sooner or later, the more traffic you have, it comes a detriment to businesses. And, you know, people just won't stop. So oh, I can't get in now there. I'm not stopping there. So it may even help a little bit on that end. Of it. It'll get our truck tracker, that, you know, the truck traffic off there. That'll be a big help. But come on, folks. Which route is the least expensive? Well, uh, good question. Actually, two anyways. Let's look at three. Alternative three. Okay, that's the green route. This is number three here, and they're going to they're going to put in only two lanes to start with, and then they they'll buy right away for four lanes, but they're only going to put in two lanes. Perfect. <laughs> Is that what the state does things? Uh, after the fact. Yeah. But anyway, the cost on two lanes. Now remember, this is two, uh, 2014 dollars. Yeah. We're talking here. Their their cost estimate is 32 million. Well, a little over 32 million dollars. Okay, the four lane, 63 million. Okay, this route down here uh, depends on which one. Which side of the airport you're going on, but that cost range from 25 million to 63 million. So they're about the same. <coughs> Pardon? They're same. So they're about the same cost. Yes. Yeah. Either on. As far either. as far as their early estimates, um, yeah. that's that's part of the studies, part of their environmental study, is where they will actually start tying down those estimates a little bit more and getting a, a clearer picture of what they expect the cost to be. Because they'll have to start taking into consideration land value, um, acquisitions, and stuff like that. And that's that's a lot of what they'll be going through. And then just environmental concerns. If they run into anything that might uh, cause uh, extensive environmental uh, studies or mitigation, uh, that could drive the cost up and may push them to one route or the other. But if you all realize when they brought these plans into us and they give us the cost factors, section one here, 
thirty million dollars section two and another thirty so on. <coughs> this from the interchange of Walmart, hundred million dollars. I said, Why don't you bring these plans in there? You can see where you're getting pushed us. Hmm. You know, they're not going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars, I don't think, right here. We hope they spend several million dollars. But you can see more or less where I think the highway department is pushing this. So. Wes Larson, I'm no expert on this, but in building churches, when I, it scared me about six lane going through there, 16 a berm in the middle, 16, right? Mm -hmm. And then how many feet outside? 16 that way? All right, that cuts into many of the buildings, is the point. It also not only cuts into the buildings, but the parking lot. Now, this city probably isn't as strict as most cities are, but you've got to have so many in a church business, you've got to have so many parking spots for each one in attendance, like in church. I don't know what it's like for a restaurant. But they'd have to buy some more land back someplace for parking if well, you had that wide road, right? Okay. That that thirty yeah. plus million, uh, just to get an <coughs> idea, they would be taking. They would there would be several entire takings of businesses. Mm -hmm. there, right? Yeah, right. Um, the actual construction now would there be possible for them to go out and bypass for to go to, up? Well, to do like, like they did on I forty Route sixty six in the seventies and. 60s and 70s, uh, they pulled everybody right into the little towns to the last minute, you know. <laughs> everybody went out west, you know, with those yeah. like, for years we were pastoring out there and came back and forth to Oklahoma. And uh, so uh, trying to get that business in, but once they did that, those little towns just closed up by one after the other went bankrupt. Well, I think the highway departments learned the lesson of some of the more significant bypass routes. And I think that's why they, they moved away from the Belfont to the Air Creek <coughs> type option and, and, and is looking at something more like this, similar to what they did in Mountain Home. Uh, you know, they're, they're taking a similar approach here than what they did there. So you, know, you, you, you keep traffic coming close to the town where it's convenient for people that are traveling to hop yeah, that's off and back over there. Uh -huh. Um, and, and, it, and it gives the city opportunity for growth along that route as long as they set up the infrastructure it, that doesn't cause you know, extra accesses onto the bypass. Like I said, it's, it's going to be a semi-controlled access. But getting back to down, uh, main, North Main or 6255 uh, 65 is actually what we call it. You've got all these, now all these have moved back, but a lot of those buildings are within a few feet. That's true. Uh, of the deal. You'd have to wipe those out. You'd have to eliminate one third of the buildings and non parking lots. You have to find parking lots someplace. Two thirds of their current estimate for that section of 65 to go six lanes is for acquisition. <coughs> so they're, they're looking at a little over 10 million. But those, place, those people have to go some other place. That's why I say, could they go to the exits go? of the, of the bypass? Well, they have to buy well, they could. If, they, if they built a six lane through yeah. town, there would be no bypass. That would be... Oh, oh, I see. That, 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 that would be... Yeah, that answers that. that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I'm Carrie Myers, and my main concern was that Harrison would be like Omaha is now. I mean, it would just really dry up. If, if there's any way... And, and, I mean, you're kind of talking about my farm we started out with, if you're not, you know... Or you're real close in there. Well, I think we're talking about your house. Right? <laughs> 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 Is there any way of getting it even closer to, to Harrison if we had to have a bypass at all? Well, because otherwise... We're... It's a render. It's a render. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you what, it's, yeah. it, close. it's pretty close what they've got. It's... Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's touching city limits. It's, it's just skirt the city limits around. It, because around. as you know and I know, you know, we have a lot of people that 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 go to Branson through Harrison oh, yeah. and we pick up a lot of business mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I just would really hate to see that you know, Harrison not benefit from our closeness to uh, to to Branson. Yeah. And know, that's a real possibility. I look at it two different ways and I 
I don't know if you were here when I first started out. That's one of the drawbacks to doing something like this. Are you going to lose business? That's the last thing you want to do. Uh, but I think we may, on the onslaught, may lose some business. But I think over a period of time, we're going to accelerate a lot more than we lose. I, I hope you're yeah, right. Yeah. I, I think the acceleration oh, didn't. Right. Oh, no. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, 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 <laughs> is, uh, no, I mean, we can't do what what they did to Omaha. No. We won't be here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little thing that happened early this morning, about 8 o'clock. I was already in the office. I got a phone call. Somebody wants a 100 acres there, right where you sit. Well, yeah. Business wants it. Okay. They are, well, you're going to put bypass in, we're going to go ahead and invest. We don't care if it's 15 or 20 years down the road. Okay. We're going to invest. Uh, hey, either way. Things like that actually get started. And I'm going to say, if they, whichever route they go, if you don't land on that, your land's going to be pretty expensive land. If you're close to one of the accesses, mm -hmm. that land value is going to skyrocket. It, it may work well for me, but I don't think it'll work well for for everybody it, no, it, else in this room. It's not. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's you're exactly what, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I thank you for helping me, but I don't think that's going to benefit the community. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Vern Nelson. <clears throat> I've lived here 25 years. I'm a professional engineer. Um, worked in uh, all over the country, pretty much. But anyway, um, worked in California on highways a lot. I was a road commissioner and county engineer. Was a hydraulic engineer for San Diego, San Diego County for years, and uh, was on the highway advisory board to the state legislature in California, advising them on highway matters. Worked with uh, California Caltrans a lot, Division of Highways, and worked with the Bureau of Public Roads a lot on highways. So I got a little background in this kind of thing, and when um, I heard about this. I come down and looked at the bypass plans and everything, and uh, I, I talked to a lot of people about it, and I've been here 25 years driving this 65, so I know what it's like. To me, the worst problem of all that you got on 65 is from come and go on the south to Taco Bell, that 3.4 miles. And it's, it's, a, it's substandard. It's a substandard highway. It's only 10-foot lanes. And um, you're driving right next to the curb. The curb is on the edge of the lane. I've driven down there several times and had a trailer in front of me, a pickup pulling the trailer, and the back of the trailer goes over the, uh, goes the center line here and the center line over there. And if there's a big semi alongside of you, you get pretty nervous, especially at night, especially in the rain. My wife refuses to drive it. Well, anyway, that's the most dangerous part uh, to me. So I think that can be fixed up. I've looked at it and looked at how to fix that up, to make it a standard highway. Instead of five 10-foot lanes, it should be five 12-foot lanes. They ought to be at least 12 foot wide. And then another two foot to the, to the curb. Right now, the curb is right there on the lane. That gives you some capacity for your strain, storm drain boxes, too. Like Wade says, they, you, go right, the, you go right next to them storm drain boxes and the tire goes right into them things at times. So it can be fixed up with the, addition, with the existing right-of-way you got there. You don't have to t uh, buy a bunch of right-of-way. You don't have to wait 20 years for it. What you're waiting for here is 20 years. And you're hoping federal money will be available. Then you're talking 2014 dollars. What's it going to be 20 years from now? What's the dollars going to be then? 20 percent a year. Yeah, yeah. So, so where are you going to get the federal money? I uh, I got the articles on Mr. Trump and the um, and the infrastructure plan. You ain't going to get it from him. He say he says the state's going to pay this. He's going to only come up with one dollar on five. And he's, he's just giving you a pittance for that. He's giving you a hundred billion for ten years, uh, and you got to use that for not just highways, but re uh, restoring landfills and all kinds of things, dams and everything else. So there's going to be no money there. 
So, um, you're talking big bucks here with all this stuff. I'm talking for widening that out 14 feet on one side or the other. Highway 65, <coughs> the 3.4 miles from come and go in the south to Taco Bell up here. Um, I'm talking about 3.3 million. 3.3 million. Now, um, the highway's good shape structurally. There's been 10 million trucks over that, 10 to 20 million trucks over it. Oh, the pavement is cracked, but that's that's from expansion and contraction. Those are temperature cracks in the mm. pavement. It's not really sunken in and like Highway Interstate 40. It's been there 45 years, and it's done really well, structurally speaking. On alignment, it would have been nice to have more sweeping curves. That one in front of Maxie's there, uh, the Ford garage, pretty darn tight. But 45 miles an hour comfortably with 12-foot lanes is no problem. That's no problem. So my recommendation is um, do something with that section, and and uh, try and get some try and get about three million, three and a half million bucks for that. Uh, that's the the part that most people in Harrison I think would say is the is the worst part, the danger part. You get pretty, it gets pretty scary driving that in the rain when there's a big semi alongside of you. And you got the curb right there, and you're running within a foot of the curb. It gets pretty scary. So I think that's the worst part. And um, you're not going to get much out of Mr. Trump, I'll tell you that, because I read what he says is available. And no, there's nothing there. But you won't have to go through an environmental impact statement if you don't use federal funds. And that's going to be a bonus. So I'm, I'm hoping, uh, I'm thinking that the governor, your state legislator, can get you some money. I got, a plan, I got some plans here for it, Dan, and I got some costs for it. And so I'm going to leave them with you and um, so, so that the council and the people can think about that a little bit. You can use the existing right of way that's there. And the beauty of it, if you put 14 foot all on one side, you're not tearing up the roadway. And when I say 14 foot on one side, you just take out that curb. You can run right in there with your concrete trucks, pour a new curb, new storm drain boxes, and not even affect the traffic on the highway. Get that all paved uh, paved in there, that 14 foot. Then overlay the whole thing with two inches of asphalt, and it just looks like a new highway. And uh, it would it would be a big plus to the to Highway 65 uh, traffic right now. Uh, you know we're we're still going to go after them to. Uh have us on 65, our current 65, and make it safer. Uh, they do not want to spend an exuberant amount of money on it and it not last 20 or 30 years down the road. There's the question, you know. And, but we've got to have a safer. Just like you said, you know, uh, you may be one day older than I am, but I don't like driving it myself, <laughs> uh, especially if I have a trailer behind me. And yeah. It's dangerous, and that's what we've approached them. I say we've we've yes. had multiple yes. conversations and correspondence requesting improvements to that section. Yeah. Hopefully we can get yeah. hopefully we can get will we get both? Well yeah. it'd be a big plus, but I don't know, maybe you can contact Donald and tell him this and this and more about <laughs> 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 Hey Burn Burn Yeah, Burn. yeah. yeah. Burn. yeah. yeah. I have yeah. a question for you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, would you um I wouldn't think we would want curbs on the highway out there. Well, it contains the water. It but takes that, care but of that, the water. The curbs are, seem to be what, you know, provide uh, the accidents, the safety, the scare. Um, well, when they're sit back from the roadway, they should. And there's a curb on every bridge you go to. And by the way, you got to widen that bridge out there, Crooked okay. Creek. That's 14 foot two. There's curbs on that, isn't there? You, yeah, you yeah. answer my question. You're, you're good with curbs. <laughs> <laughs> you like curbs. Okay. Okay, thank you, brother. Yeah, you did. Yes, sir. I can't get out. I can't get out. My name is Dale okay. Nathan. <laughs> and I'd just like to say that Mr. Williams, you of y'all know, was here when that stretch of road he's talking about was built. It was built as a four lane, never designed as a five lane. Yes, sir. I grew up on the hill, watched oh, it grow. Why, uh, if they would come through and done it in the first place with a little foresight, I believe that might have improved things. 
Well, let's set up. I hope yeah. you'll do something with, you know, all these people you're planning on displacing. Some of them spent their life building those homes, and it's just like disregard. We don't care. We're coming through just like the government did on the Buffalo River. And I'm just here to say, I'm farming out there, and I'm going to be there for 40 more years or more. So I ain't going nowhere. And I'm done. Thank you. 40 more years. At least. But you're right on the... Yes, I know I'm right on the bypass. I grew up when you used to cross that bridge down there at Ben Eddings on the little yeah. stretch of rock. There wasn't no bridge there. Well, it's set on 96 inches now, and trucks are turned yeah. under uh, two inches. I agree. Inches. It should have been wide yeah, from it's, the start. It's totally meant. No road. I don't want to say screw it. It's going to have congestion. Yeah. Open it up. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything they want to bring up? Yes, sir. Uh, my name's Bobby Woods. <laughs> I'm just looking at this and listening to the uh, the six lanes with a median through that park creates a bypass. And you can't, you know, getting on and off of that would be impossible for people to get to businesses <coughs> there. But it appears to me that the money would be much better spent to rebuild that intersection at, at Wendy's, the Highway 43 intersection. That's a, that is a beaten traffic knot now. That's what causes a lot of the congestion back down in front of the mall to the ranch house. And if you could fix that and, and do what Vern said on the bypass and maybe bring that <coughs> one up, that widening going up from, the, from Taco Bell up to the 43 intersection, um, the, those lanes are narrow, but if you get on the side along Meeks and Domino's Pizza right in there, there's some curbing that's out on the edge of the road that needs yeah. to be widened. Just a little work through there yeah. and you know, better turning it around Wendy's 43 and Rock Springs Road and um, if anything can be done to the traffic lights to help flow. But that bypass is the dangerous part. I agree with that. And my wife doesn't drive on it unless she has to. She goes through the downtown part. But uh, I think that would be money much better spent and that thirty million would be would wouldn't be needed to do that all of that. Because uh, basically the right of way is there. Already. I, I agree with you. Um, and just to, to, I guess, reiterate, the six lanes is what the highway department says is necessary through town in order to not build a bypass. They have no intention. If they build a bypass, they have no intention of six lanes in town at all. Um, that just means we got to we got to stick, stick with them to to address the actual yeah. deficiencies, what Byrne was talking about, the right. intersections that are a problem. Well, assuming his cost estimate is anywhere near accurate, three or four million, uh, you know, another million or two on up to 43, and they've got a lot of that 30 million left just to spend on the bypass. That they, yeah, that, they address all the safety back. concerns that we've had, but they'll, they'll still do. Right, and that's what I thought was being looked at was the bypass existing bypass along with up to at least the junction of Highway 3. Well, believe it or not, that's what I was looking at. Six, lane 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 lane. six lanes of traffic and a 16 foot yes. median is... Well, they're projecting 30 years down the road. you got to remember that. What's going to happen to Harrison 30 years down the road? Can they... Will four lanes handle the traffic at all through Harrison? Way down the road? But about a five or six million dollar cost now versus 30 million and, and you're getting all that much more distance out of it. It would be much well. But what we're saying, the 30 million is off the table if they do the bypass. Yeah. I mean, their goal is not to. Okay. Well, that's fine. And, and I'll probably get a call from our doc. Yeah. Their goal of what they're looking at right now is not to necessarily address the concerns that we've expressed on the narrowness and stuff like that. They're looking at being able to carry on their highway system their projected 20 year traffic volumes. This highway won't do it for them. The five lanes through town, they say it's not enough. That's why they did the study to get to this. We asked them, we said, hey, what can we do to keep the traffic coming through town? This is what they brought back, which is not a viable option. <coughs> so I agree with you. I want them to spend that money going down through here. But they'll still spend this money, too. And they're probably going to be more likely to want to spend 
this money first because it solves their problem. <coughs> While this money solves our concerns. Does that make sense? Well, yes and no, but <clears throat> 30 million on that short stretch of road, uh, as I was saying, it, you know, it burns anywhere close to right. 3.4 million on the bypass and put another couple of million to go on up to Highway 43 and fix that 43 intersection. You know, you're spending five or six million, so that money, that, but that money won't solve the problem that they're trying to solve. Well, they'll have 24 million left to start on the bypass. I understand that. I'll take that six million. Yeah. Add it to the 24 million that you're saying they'll have left, and they'll need to build that bypass. But that'll be fine because that's yeah. their pri priority. They could do both. That would be great. I don't, well, I don't think the bypass is going to be wait, They're going to need, need a lot more than thirty million by the time they get the bypass. That's what they're going to need. Dan, can I say something else? Yeah. 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 We want the people coming through Brand, coming through our town to Branson, to come through this town, right through the middle of town, and stop at these different stores. Can we promote? us going out the airport road the other way so that thousands of us don't use that so much, except when we're going to eat there and get some gas there. Well, believe it or not, we just had a public hearing on that master street plan. It's yeah. sitting right there. Uh -huh. We're, in that plan, there's what they call alternative rally. And believe it or not, that's in that master plan. We're going to try to do that with in-house, but is it we're talking, what What was the total plan? Total, there, 50? Oh, no, yes, you're, you're looking at 80, 90 million. 80, 90 million on that plan. But that's, okay. that's, that's a that's, lot of roads. That's a lot yeah. of roads. It, it's a plan that identifies needs and then as funding is available and we can do it, it, it gives us a plan to work from yeah. to start actually addressing yeah. it. You're talking about the main plan is to diverse us away from yes. down here. Okay, great. Yes. You're ahead. And make our 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 traffic, the locals have other routes other than getting on. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll sl slide back to the When we're going to Branson, we always okay. go out by the airport road. We're the south part of town. You know, the, it's uh the two unless main, we've got something we gotta do in town. Yeah. The, the two main goals of the Master Street Plan were to um, identify routes that can be improved to give people in town ways to get from north to south or east to west without actually having to travel on 65. So that, that's what he meant by alternative route. The other goal, the other uh, component that was, as we were developing it, that we uh, were thinking about was being able to provide routes into town off of a potential bypass. Um, you know, we'll have to revisit the master street plan once they pick a final route and make sure that everything is going to work. <coughs> those were those were two of the main goals when we started looking at coming up with this, this new master street plan uh, was, was to help those two main issues. Yes, Bob Creamer again. Uh, just a thought. I was just wondering if I don't know how many uh, what the master plan is. How many years do you have a master plan? Five, ten years, twenty years, whatever. Would it be possible to widen, like the gentleman over here said, because I agree with him that that uh, between come and go out to uh, uh, Taco Bell is way too narrow. Is there a possibility that that could be widened uh, not another lane, but to 12-foot 12, 12 lanes, and then do the intersection at 43 and 65 now, but with the master plan to maybe do the rest of it in 15, 20 years? Okay, the, the master plan is basically our streets, not state highways. Um, if what you're talking about on, on the bypass, I guess the question would have to be posed, what do our citizens, what's their opinion of us using our local dollars to fix what we think is a problem on a state highway? Or do we want to continue to pressure the state to spend, you know, 
the money that we all pay into the state to address these highway issues. That that's really you know that's the question you'd be facing there. But I think to come and go to Taco Bell is in immediate need, and the uh, intersection at 43 and uh, 65 is in immediate need. If those could be taken care of within the next five years or so, and then a master plan to do something else in the next well, 15 or 20 years. This is all. Again, it's up to the state at this point. I, I, I understand that. Until we, if, if the city wants to invest, say, $6 million, you know, we, we could probably get that accelerated. But that would be $6 million that's not spent on other projects, yeah. other needs. That's dealing with our specific, our infrastructure, the infrastructure that you know the citizens of Harris. Right. Yeah. They did tell us. They did tell us they'd start on either one on the soon. We got the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to give them money. They'll start on either one. Come on, <laughs> come on. Come on. Yeah. Hey, Bernie, you back? I'm back because then um, that's yeah. their highway, and their highway is a mess. It's substandard. And when you improve it, you're improving their highway. So they ought to be coming up with some money for that. That's right. You're putting a two-inch layer over the whole thing. You're widening it and making it a standard. It's not standard now. It's substandard. It's too narrow. So you're fixing their highway for them. Why shouldn't they design it? Why shouldn't they pay a bunch for it? You're exactly right. So and if you should be able to get other state money from maybe the governor or the state congressman. There should be other help besides the city doing all that. That's right. Sure. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Jeff Olsen. I my question is, do we have any say in this? Or is it what the state decides is best for the state, but the good of the most people? That's my question. It looked like the bypass is in the state's interest, not Harrison's interest, but the state's interest. And if they're paying for it and they think it's best for them. Then we're whistling Dixie because it doesn't matter what we think, does it? I, I'm not. I'm not going to say one way or the other. They will conduct their own public hearings. But isn't the horse out of the barn by then? If if they do their environmental studies and say there's no reason that we can't do either of these bypasses, there's no impediment, and we think it's better for the state to invest their money that way. Once they've spent that money, they're not going to turn back and say, oh, sure, it's not going to work about inside Harrison? I've, I've seen, well, I mean, I've seen them make changes. I mean, they take, when they hold the public hearing, they, they take the comments serious. Now, you know, if, if they receive a lot of feedback that we don't want to bypass at that public hearing, we want to go through town, I'm not sure that's going to convince them to, to spend three or four times as much money. Right. Um, you know, they, they are going to look at what they consider the, the greater good to the Arkansas State Highway System. That's, that is ultimately their responsibility. So actually, we don't That's have any say. Well, you know, other than saying, hey, if you build a great big bypass, and guess who's going to lose revenue? The state do. They do. They got, and we push that to them too. If we lose revenue, they're going to lose revenue. Bypassing border towns is not necessarily the best idea. Yes, they but, you know, I can't tell you, I can't tell you one way or the other, other than the figures they presented to us, what they presented to us leans more in one direction. There's no doubt about that. Uh, could we get them to spend a hundred and whatever million dollars on this and us actually losing businesses? This is only one of the sections, folks. And, and still not yeah. addressing the safety yeah. concerns from come and go to right. yeah. the old old wall. Yeah. <laughs> yes. right. Historically, you've got to look at what bypasses have done. I mean, look what happened at, in Huntsville. Oh, man. I mean, it killed Huntsville, but look yeah. what's happened now. I mean, it's it does, probably pretty well. It you know, Huntsville has several down years. I've talked to them, and Mount mm -hmm. Home only had like two down years. Because it was close in, they knew it was coming. They had many, many years of planning, and they didn't lose it. Actually, it's boosted. How much it hurts this town will depend on our planning. How the people that yeah. sit up here over different commissions and, and meetings, how they react and get ready. 
Yes. Ready for the and how we get ready as a community. And that's one reason why we re rewrote yeah. the codes. Yeah. To allow for that future growth. That's that's one reason why we're, there's a new sewer line under Highway 65 is to prepare for potential growth that way. Okay. Thanks. Does anybody want to write a letter down to the state? <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like we don't really have a say in what they're no. going to do in the long run. Don't say we don't have to. Well, I mean, as far yeah. as right now, these things are not going to affect us right now. Right now, we can fix alternative routes like you guys are proposed in the extra plan. And I think that that's what we all really need to get behind, what we need to focus on the most, because, like he said, a dollar for five dollars, and it's not there anyway. The f even 20 years, 30 years, and it's going to cost more by that 30 year lapse in time. I don't think we really even need to be stressing and feeling like this is a chaotic thing, whether our land's going to be taken or we're going to have to knock out all of our businesses. We need to focus on widening out what we have control of and take away from that so that they're not, our highway's not wide enough. We're going to have to take all your businesses out. I like this master plan for widening out all of our alternate routes. And I think that that's what we really need to be talking about versus the chaos that might come from this. This. But um, I will mention, and I didn't probably want to get into it, is our future infrastructure plan. Uh, we're going to spend several million dollars on roads within our next infrastructure if the if the public approves it. And uh, of course, about five and a half million dollars will be spent on government drive uh, safety for our kids. But within that eight year span which covers almost 20 million i'm not going to say 20 million but almost we're going to spend a lot on road work and we've got to get this place safe around here we're going to keep pushing the highway department as much as we can to at least make 65 safe of course right now they do have this they has everybody been out there looking oh, they put these little flags up yeah they're going to work on that. We're going to push on that right off the bat. That, yeah, that, that project is in the works. It's just a matter of are they going to set it up for six lanes yeah. or are they going to set it up for five? That's, that's really the only thing that's still in limbo about that. Okay, I hope you got something out of this meeting. Uh, I appreciate you all being here. Uh, this, this is what we need moving forward. Actually, we're bringing up a neighbor council meeting and Hopefully, I'm going to say within two or three months, we're going to be pushing our infrastructure plan out. Uh, you'll see a lot more things that actually the city's going to do in the next eight, ten years. Uh, but we're thinking about you all first. I know the gentleman back there don't, don't want me to take his land. I don't want my land taken either. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. That's the last thing I want to do. But I tried, when they put, started putting casinos in up here, I tried to get, get that $100,000 a month. I said, I got 200 acres out there. I'll rent that out for 100,000 a month. That's been fast. <laughs> anyway, uh, has anybody else got anything? These controlled accesses, uh, way, will they be stoplights or overpasses? To me, if you have a bypass and you put stoplights in, you don't have a bypass. They're, they're not far, along, far enough along in the process to really say one way or the other. I would hope, I would hope that they're, they're overpassed. Type and not stoplights because that's the way we that, used to have the bypass thing. We put all the stoplights yeah. in. <laughs> and, and, and the key is, and, and why they would make it controlled access is so that you know businesses or whatever else could develop along there. They don't they don't have drives onto that road, so then you don't have the people turning on and off, and you just don't have the need for it, uh, the lights. And, and so that's. That's what. That's actually what they did at Mountain Home. Is it's and, and when I met when we met with them, they told us they would adopt a very similar uh, controlled access policy for this section of highway. They would expect us to adopt as well as far as any development that you know occurs within the city's jurisdiction. Right? They would expect us to follow that as well. Dan, yes, would sir. the city prefer the northern route or the southern route? Well, wait a minute. I actually talked about that. Huh? And but we till they do all their topical and geographical and all that stuff. You know, if I was looking at it personally, the, this route here, 
is pro we're, we're better, better managed infrastructure wise probably to go this route. Because see our city farms right here. There's our sewer system right there. Yeah, I mean, and you get on there and you start pumping about that down. too. Pardon? I said, thanks for building that right under my house. Anyway, you know, that's just personal. They're going, they're going to do what they're going to do. It looks like the city, the 20 year plan ties into the northern route much better than the yes, southern route. It does. You're exactly right. That's, that's why I said we, we need to know what direction they're going to go. And once we do know, we may have to go back to our. When would that decision be made? I. I don't know. Well, that would be, you know, that wouldn't even be an educated guess. So, you know, we don't have the slightest idea on that. It goes as fast as the Tourist Information Center. <laughs> 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 Do you drive by that every day? You're talking, pardon me, Wes Larson again. You're talking like the, yeah. they can do anything they want to down there. They're a bunch of politicians. They want to do what the people want to do, except for a former uh, senator that we voted out because he did. He voted for Obamacare after 60 some percent of the people uh, uh, said he did, we didn't want it, and we knocked him out of it. Thank God. Well, and that's that's what they will be really do if they don't do what the people want them to do. We will, we will send letters to them and suggestions and things like that. And they, believe it or not, they do take those suggestions. They take sure. them. And. Actually, we've got a very good rapport with the state highway department. Okay. We started all this through our district office. We never went over anybody's head with anything. Everything has worked right out of this office. We've got a real good report. Now, what we suggest, well, they do. We can't say that. We can't say that. But, but they're not a dictator, no. is what I'm saying. No. We can knock them out anytime we want them. Okay. Anybody else? We get it to a senator. 